Workout Wednesday, 2021, week 24. Can you visualize the cholera outbreak? In this visualization, I challenge you to use map layers to create the cholera outbreak. This visualizes the pumps, the aggregated latitude and longitude for each death, and then also a density plot as well. It also uses the, uh, the buffer function to be able to show the average distance to pump for each one of those deaths. But first off, we need to figure out how to join the data together. So let's take a look. I've added in my first file, which is my deaths individual. I then need to join together with my water pumps. And now with this, I need to go into the physical layer within my relationships because I need to do a spatial join with my water pumps. So when I drag that in, what you'll see is this option to create join calculation. And in here, we're going to use the make point option for the latitude and the longitude. And we're going to repeat the same on the water pump side. So make point, latitude, longitude. But this time we're going to wrap that in a buffer because we want to be able to visualize all of the individual points inside a radius of the water pumps. So we're going to say the latitude and longitude, which is the geometry field. And I'm going to put this up to 500 um, miles just so that we get all of our data back together. I'm going to click OK and you'll notice that we've still got that exclamation mark and it's because we need to change this to an intersects. And now we have everything back and just in case I am going to select a full outer in case any of the values do fall outside of the areas. And then lastly what we need to then do is bring in the aggregate values which pops up um, with so we want to um, join these on latitude and on longitude and then click OK so the first thing we need to do is we need to recreate those make point options so I'm going to create a death point so that is make point uh, we want the death latitude and the death longitude and that's going to give us our density marks so I'm just going to bring that in here I'm going to put my death ID onto detail and I'm going to then change that to a density plot and I'm going to up the size to be as big as possible and then finally it's about changing the color so I went for that shade let me just check yep so that is the density plot in the background. Then we need to add in all of the aggregate deaths. So in here we're going to do make point but this time of the death lat and the death long from the aggregate data set. So here we have our aggregate values. And now I can drag and drop that onto my mark layer and then add in the number of deaths onto size and change that to a circle and then we're kind of getting somewhere um, and we also need to add location ID to our detail shelf and what we can do here is we can change the colors of these so that we have black circles with a white border to show all of these individual use cases and then finally what we need to do before our buffer is add in our pump locations so in here we can again use that uh, make point option so make point uh, pump lat and pump long and again if we just drag and drop that on top of our marks layers we can add pump id to detail change that to a red color and then up the size once we've changed it to a circle so here we have all of our pumps and from here we can put pump ID onto label as well so that we can see all of those and let's just move that to center center 
and change that font to a white. So now we have our pump locations, we have our um, density plot in the background and our aggregations on top of the whole of the map. The next thing we need to do is we need to be able to create the average deaths, um, average number of average distance between the number of deaths. So um, between each pump ID, we need to create the average distance. All that is, is we create a calculation and this time we're using the distance function. So within that, we want distance and we want from the pump point to the death point. And we want to do that in meters. Click OK. And now when I drag that into my view and I click on the average, we have our values there. And we can format these a little bit better if we wanted to. Um, so we, what I did with them in our view was I added a black border and then changed them to like a, um, a pale color so that it stood out in the background. We also have this pump number parameter. So in here you can just see it's an integer and we use parameter actions to change them. So to color these values, we're just gonna say pump equals param and we're just gonna say, does the pump ID equal the parameter? Click okay. And then let's add that to color. And from here we can change the true to be black and the false to be that um, m the pale color in the background. Again, formatting all comes very last. So we have this value here of our 118 art meters or 119 meters um, away. So I want a radius around pump one of 190 meters. So what we can do here is we want to call this buffer and we want to say if pump uh, pump equals parameter, which is a true false calculation, then uh, return the buffer between the, um, so we want the pump point. And then from here, we actually want to uh, use that distance option. But um, when we use distance, um, let's just put uh, meters in there again. When we use distance, it does it as the, the sum of distance rather than the individual records. So if I just do that as an end, if I add that to my view, you'll see that I get for every single point, we get a circle going outwards. And that's kind of not really what we want. So for this distance calculation, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fix this at the pump ID. Uh, for the minimum, uh, sorry, for the average distance and then close that off like so. And now when I hit apply and okay, you'll see that my buffer is now in the background. And once again, I can move these around so it does go towards the background. I can get rid of the color and make sure that my border is on there in the background. So now we have our buffer there in the background the final option is to create a parameter action when you bring them onto a dashboard. And we actually just want one more sheet. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate this sheet so that we can try and bring back the number of deaths. And we need to create a calculation which is called number of deaths. And then here we need to say if the distance is less than or equal to the fixed at pump ID for the average distance, which is the same as what we did before, then return the death ID, end. And then we're gonna um, option or right click and drag that to columns and select account distinct. And now we have our um, average uh, number of deaths within that radius of that average distance. Finally, it's just pulling them together onto a worksheet. And then the one thing that I did was added the action to be able to click on a pump to change it. Now, one thing that I stumbled across was actually if I add my buffer to detail on both of these sheets, 
you'll notice that I don't actually need to um, have the false highlight action. So when I click a parameter or a sheet, it's then going to update the pump number. So if I go to dashboard and actions, I'm going to add in a parameter action here. I'm going to say I want the pump number and I'm going to change it with pump ID. And I'm going to just call this change pump and click OK. OK again. And now when I click on number two, it's just going to automatically uh, change the value to that uh, pump number two. And I did just say that um, it doesn't highlight the values within the options. So let's just go and recheck that. So now when I click on five, you'll obviously see that um, it's actually not highlighting everything. And again, if I click on one, it's highlighting just the value and not graying everything out. And, and what I actually do need instead is that buffer not null calculation. So in here, we're just going to say not is null buffer. So we're going to use that one instead. So let's create that uh, buffer not null. So we're going to say not is null buffer. And that's going to be our thing that goes on to color. And we can change the colors accordingly later. So buffer not null. And now I can, I also need to add this to the detail of all of these shelves all the marks cards so that it allows us to select a specific uh, pump number. Now when I go back to my dashboard and I just click on a pump, this will now highlight, it won't highlight the value in the background and just allow us to click through. So if I show you on a bar chart, if I click pump number four, you'll see that it's not highlighted or grayed out the rest of the bars in the background. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something new with the Workout Wednesday. Once again, just follow the formatting and I hope you enjoyed this week. Thanks very much.